Good day, everyone. All of us work with students who have learning needs in some shape or form, some diagnosis or the other. And over the years, we've seen many of them come to good places in good function and having the ability to really make things work for themselves. We've also seen how personalities could be shaped by their learning struggles. And there's different profiles that evolves when children struggle with learning needs, which we need to take in consideration and we need to be looking at what does it mean if we chase the why, why this particular personality piece that's coming with this particular student. One of those learning profiles is called the lazy student. And I put lazy in inverted commas because many of us don't even realize that some kids are smart enough to cope and to compensate at almost a very high level, um, even when they do have learning needs. But because they are putting in way more effort than the kid next to them, they don't get the same reward for a job well done. And over time, they figure out that the reward is just not commensurate to the amount of effort that has to go in. So it's not that they want to be quote unquote lazy. It is that they have given up on the fact that learning could be rewarding. And that is a problem. And we need to be working on the intrinsic motivation and helping them to see that there are parts of you that certainly can. And what are your strengths? Focus on that. And how can we support your vulnerabilities through that? There's also, there's a whole area of interception. Interception is the way that my body tells my, my brain how I feel. And it gives me a information that, that is led through the parasympathetic system, my vagus nerve, to help me to feel grounded and feel safe and secure within myself. And if that system is not operating very well, you are under-registering information and can often appear sluggish, lazy, and just as if you are in your own world. There's also the fact that anxiety could cause us to want to suppress our interceptive system and also to be very um, aware of the sympathetic over arousal that we're feeling when we are feeling anxious, which actually this allows us to really get to a place of calm that we need in order to feel rewarded within our own bodies. And so very often the lazy syndrome and again, with an inverted commas, you want to see that as a syndrome that's happening because of a child that doesn't feel that um, if I put in the effort, am I ever going to get validated for the amount of work I have to put in? It can change if you give them more proficiency. So that's something else you would want to do in therapy. But I want you to think deeper about what it actually is, what's going on in that child's mind to some degree, not that we can know everything. There's also these other profile that we call the perfectionistic student. And this is the one who decided that in order for me to feel good about what I do and what I produce, it has to be perfect. It has to be 100% what I'm envisioning it to be. If it's not, oops, lots and lots of frustration, even to the point of meltdowns. So oftentimes this goes hand in hand with a child who also has a lower self-esteem about their ability to produce um, and almost have an inferiority piece going on that they have to prove to themselves, not only to others, but also to themselves that I'm able and capable and that I can be productive. So they set this very high standard on themselves that it's almost impossible to achieve. So it's fraught of anxiety, fraught of potential to get dis, um, disappointed and also then to get into meltdown behavior. And this, this A students sometimes, that they are on honor roll and they're doing extremely well. And the school is looking at the parents saying, I'm not so sure what you're talking about because she's smiling at school. She's doing extremely well at school. She's on honor roll. What more do you want? And the parent says, but you guys don't know what it costs. 
You don't know that she's almost given completely up on social life because she's spending every waking moment trying to get things perfect so that she can hand in the work at the perfect time in a perfect way and that the pressure that's on her is just too much. So this, this cost of, of doing a project over and over until it is at the degree and the level where you want it to be, how much energy can be left for being social? How many energy can be left to actually pursue a recreational activity, a place where you can just give vent to your own creativity? So there's a cost there. There's also the student that becomes the class clown. Everybody loves him, her, um, and it's really a masterpiece of deflection. It's actually a huge defense mechanism. Let me rather have you focus on the fact that I can be funny, which is so much more rewarding than you understanding that I'm actually not capable, that I actually didn't do my homework, that I can't put in that effort, that it's just not who I am. So I would prefer to just be somebody that can deflect through my sense of humor. Kids getting lost, that's what happens. We need to see beyond their defense mechanism. And there may be many more, but the final one I want to focus on today is the whole aspect of belonging. What do I mean by that? We all have wishes, we have dreams, we have ideals, and all of us want to be the hero and the heroine in some shape or form when we are still in our fantasy life when we're younger. And when that fantasy becomes reality, and the reality is that I don't fit in where I thought I wanted to, that I actually do want to belong in the more smart group, but I'm not able to because I can't read properly, I can't write properly, or I may not be able to communicate so effectively. So I can't go there. I don't belong. Um, I really would like to be in the Barbie group where everybody is wearing the latest fashions and they're all looking pretty every day and they have their nails done and highlights in the hair. And I want to belong so much to that group and be that popular person. But because I cannot make that grade, I can't belong to that group. Oh, I want to belong to the nerd group because they get to do cool things with video games and they technology and they do the class theater and they do the backgrounds and the backdrops. I would love to do that piece, right? So, but I'm not really a good enough nerd. I have other things too that I focus on that's not only the nerdy topics, right? And I know I'm generalizing everyone. I know I am, but... I think you can see shapes of everybody in these learning profiles. So oftentimes the kid who doesn't find a group to belong to will often end up in a group where they shouldn't belong. It may be substance abuse. It may be conduct disorder. It might be that they get bullied into doing things that they never really wanted to do. But because they don't belong, that's they they easy prey. So... If a child could, if a student could, they would. That's the bottom line. And it takes us as professionals to figure out what is it that we need to investigate to get behind the defense mechanism and figure out what's going to make them tick in a way where they can celebrate who they are in the reality of who they are, not in the fantasy in the good place, a place that they can take further and become more productive, a place where they can fit and feel like I can use this to, to bring about the best parts of myself. We owe it to them. See you soon. Bye-bye.